Sales is just like going to the bar, seeing somebody you're attracted to, and trying to get laid. Hey, I'm Donnie Bovine, CEO and founder of Success Champions Networking and author of Endless Streamer Referrals. And this is Growth Mode, a sales and business development podcast all geared towards helping you scale and grow your business. Hanging out with me as always is Kevin Snow, the sales and automation tactician and genius. And on this episode, we're going to dive into really how sales is just like trying to get laid at the bar. All right, so we've all had that sales experience with the the salesperson comes into your office that, you know, you barely get past the hi, my name is, and they're immediately trying to get you to sign on the dotted line. You know, they went from zero to 60 in under a second, and you're like, what what the hell just happened? I don't even, you know, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> what, you know, what are you trying to sell me? And it, and it just feels slimy, and it feels gross. And it, it's literally like going to uh, going to the bar and, you know, getting hit on. And them not even trying to have small talk. It's just, ooh, let's go jump in the car. And, and it, it's it's rude and, and really gross. So how how do we not do that as salespeople? Well, I, I think for me, I mean, uh, most people have no clue how to pick up the opposite sex, period. Right. They're, they're nervous. They're, they're, or the same sex. I don't give a shit. <laughs> right. Um, uh, sleep with whoever the hell you want to sleep with. Right. But, but at the end of the day, people just don't know how to talk to people they're interested in because they're so stuck up in their own head. And it's literally like they walk up to a bar. They see somebody they're attracted to. Eye contact happens and they feel they get this moment of courage to walk up and they look at the person and say, you want to fuck? Right? I mean, that's how it comes across most times in sales is they're so eager to get to the ending. And what people don't understand. So you're saying they want a climax. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> right? But what people don't understand is sex is not about the climax. It's about the fucking chase. Right? And if you understand that the way to get laid is to enjoy the fucking chase, you'll get laid more than anybody else in the freaking room merely because you understand the rules of the game and how to communicate effectively to other people. It's a lot. I think it's really about getting that deep, that real connection with people. You know, when you are at the bar and you're trying to, you know, find that perfect person, you you need to have that connection. You know, it's not just, hey, let's go jump in the bed. There's going to be something that clicks. And there's going to be a connection or reason that you want to take it to that level. The same is true with sales. You need to have that connection with your client. And me and one of my buddies were talking about this last night uh, about how, you know, in, the, in today's world, it, it seems like people don't want to have that connection. They're, you know, they're fine with the superficial relationships and they're not trying to go deep enough and have that real connection where you can have that, you know, real relationship. And I think that's, you know, when we were talking on the personal side, but I think that I know that really applies on the business side as well. You see it every day. People are just trying to go right, you know, in Facebook groups, they go right to the pitch. They they get you in a DM on, on social media and it's like, buy my stuff. You set an appointment with me. There is no actual getting to know and there's no flirting. There's none of the foreplay that Lee goes into the cool relationship and the cool outcomes. I can't wait till your mom listens to this episode. She's going to flip her shit. <laughs> but <clears throat> I mean, here's the truth. Going up to somebody and saying, hey, you want to fuck <clears throat> does actually work. The problem is it's going to be a one-night fling, so it's like a transactional sale. <clears throat> you don't want the person that will say yes to that right out the gate 
because it's going to be, be miserable. You're going to freaking do the deed. You're going to, you know, coyote ugly out the fucking room. And if you don't know what coyote ugly really stands for is the person you're sleeping with is so fucking ugly. You'd rather chew off your arm than wake him up so you can sneak out the fucking room. <coughs> Excuse me. But, you know, if if you will take time to, as Kevin said, build the relationships, establish some sort of trust, we're looking to get married. Not just to fuck, not just to climax, not just to go through the process. We're looking for a lifetime relationship here. I'm talking we grow old sitting on a farm and we Thelma and Louise off the fucking cliff together, right? That's what you're looking for when you're you're talking and interacting and engaging with your clients. But because most people sucked even in the dating game, they hit that same level of energy into their sales and business development now. And it's like they walk up to somebody and say, hey, you want to buy my shit? And the person, you know, is instantly set up. Because imagine 90% of the population, if somebody walked up to you and said, hey, you want to fuck? They're going to look at you're going to look at them like they got two damn heads. It's the same thing in sales. So you got to enjoy the chase. You got to build the relationships. You got to dive into their world and you actually got to give a shit about them as an individual and then about them as a company. Yeah, And I, I think the actual the building the relationship piece is you, know, you, you get better outcomes when you do it. If you go up to someone and say, hey, buy my stuff, they might buy your stuff, but they're going to buy a little bit of your stuff. If you actually spend the time and figure out and have those conversations and understand what's going on in the world and where their issues are and how you can help, you're going to sell more of your stuff because you're going to present a better product to them. The same is true with the dating. You know, it's exactly like dating. You want, when you get have that, you know, that small talk and those initial conversations and you get to know the person that you're flirting with. You get to understand what their needs are and how you can play into that. And that, that sounds really super manipulative. It, that just uh, came out of my mouth, but it's not because it, it's really an authentic way to build that relationship because we're all in, uh, we're in a world where we build trust and we build relationships based on what's in it for us and what we're able to provide to that person. So having those conversations really is how you understand what you can give that person. You might find out through that small talk that, hey, I don't have anything for you, which is awesome. That's the purpose of that conversation. If you don't have that conversation and you just go and, hey, let, let's go, let's go do this. And they do, it's probably going to end up horrible because they're going to be unhappy and they're going to tell everyone that you suck. Yeah, I just had this flash in my head, the movie Goodwill Hunting. And one of the greatest scenes in that movie is the fucking bar scene where the super genius dude with the ponytail is trying to pick up Mini Driver. And, you know, he walks up or Ben Affleck makes the move first, right? Ben's trying to pick up Mini Driver and this freaking Harvard collegiate asshole walks up. And as Ben's talking to her, he starts spitting all this like historical smart knowledge and stuff. And Ben's like, you know, Hey, I'm talking here. And the guy's like, yeah, but you're, you're saying the wrong things. You're not saying the right stuff. And Ben's like, you got a problem here. And all of a sudden, you know, Matt walks up and he's like, I'll handle this. And as the guy starts talking, you know, Matt just destroys the dude with his knowledge and history. And the guy was just spouting shit out of textbooks <laughs> and had no real, you know, meat on the bone. Didn't really know what he was talking about. So he goes away. So Ben and Matt go over and they sit at a bar and they sit down at the table. And this is what most people do is sometimes they even make the first right move, but don't even recognize they make the right move. And they go sit down in the fucking bar. And then the next scene, what you see is Minnie come as she's you know, later in the night, walks up to you and goes, you're a fucking idiot to Matt. And she's like, why am I an idiot? She's like, I've been waiting all night for you to come over and talk to me. And you never said hi. Right. And that's what most people do is even if they get the right first move done, they don't go for the second and third move because they are not recognizing they're getting engagements. And of course, if you've seen the movie, you know, he mad up getting her number. And as they're walking down the street later that night, they see the fucking four really smart kids sitting in the, in the, 
in the bar and the guy's eating an apple and Matt walks up and sl- goes, you like apples? Slaps her number up on the freaking window, goes, how do you like them apples? I love the whole fucking <laughs> scene, right? Um, but but that's that's the whole point of this, guys. You know, when you're selling, just like when you're getting laid, people want that confident person. They want that person that can have a real conversation, not doing stupid one-liner pickup things like, did it hurt when you fell from heaven or stupid shit like that? <laughs> you know, they're they're looking for this genuine engagement, this genuine vibe. I mean, so think about it. You're at a networking group or you're a networking after hours, you're having cocktails, you're at a party, whatever. It's the same thing. How do you confidently say hello to somebody without any attachment to what their response is? And if you can pull that off, that first move, it's an amazing first step to build a lifetime relationship. You were talking about moving from step one to step two to step three. And that's a huge portion of the dating scene and being in that new relationship with someone is understanding the signals. You know, yeah. it happens all the time. It's like, oh, did I not understand the signals you're giving me? Or they just miss them. Exactly the same in sales. Your client, your prospects are going to give you signals that it's okay to move to that next step and to have that next level conversation with them. And you have to be paying attention. If you're not having those conversations, you're not giving the chance to give signals and you're just guessing. You're literally going there. Well, I think they're at this stage of the, of the sales process and you're, you know, you're going to throw out some sales line and you're going to get smacked down. For sure. For sure. You know, and I think that like in, you know, trying to get laid, people are so desperate for the climax that they show up the same way impatient as hell, you know, to try and get the deal done. So, so because I think this will be funny to me, Kevin, if you were at a bar, how do you <laughs> strike up a conversation with a gal that or a guy? I don't give a shit. You know, uh, how do you strike up with a conversation with somebody so that they're they're not instantly turned off without using some stupid cheesy pickup line? Oh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he would, and I totally did this on purpose. Yeah, he did. Oh. I so I'm a high C. I I'm going to do this completely different than Donnie or a, a high I or any of the other relationship types would. I I kind of I, I like to sit at the bar and in the general area of the person that I want to engage with, and I'm going to kind of listen to what the conversations are, especially if they're alone and they're having conversations with the bartender. Then it's a lot easier to say, hey, I heard you over t- saying about this, you know, and then being able to give, ask that question and stripe the conversation about that topic they're having. You know, it's much for me as that introverted type, it's much harder to go up to a group of girls and strike up the conversation with the girl I'm interested in. It's much easier for me to wait for them to be, you know, someone that's sitting at the bar and be able to have that conversation with them because they're going to be more for me. I just. I think they're more apt to wanting to have that conversation. You know, you don't go to the bar just to be alone. And if you come to the bar alone, you're trying to find someone to to interact with. So that's that's my play. You just I'm yeah. sure you just jump into the into the middle of the group of five girls and start showing off. I, not necessarily showing <laughs> off, but I, I I will always have ammunition at the ready. I mean, one of my favorite moves just because of the years of bartending would I, I'd find out what they're drinking. And if it's a table of five gals, you know, we'll just go with your number sitting there. I'm going to find what all five gals are. And then I'm going to order five drinks. I'm going to grab a tray from a server tray from the bartender. And I'm going to deliver five drinks of mine to the table and say, this round's on me. If you want the second one, come say hi. And I'll just walk the fuck away. And what's funny is to watch the girls, and I know I've got about five to ten seconds before they either say, hey, come on back, or they, you know, laugh. And I mean, I've had times where I've had drinks sent to my side of the bar or whatever else. But oftentimes for me, it's about just getting into the conversation, right? It's about walking up um, because 
chasing girls, you know, all that through those portions of my life, they're just as fucking nervous and they want to meet somebody as well. You got to break the fucking ice with with anything. Um, I mean, I've I've done stupid shit like walking up and literally taking a drink from a gal and replacing it with a better one. You know, because if I heard them order at a bar and they ordered a fucking, I don't know, Midori Sour or something, you know, I'll go up and tuck and take in my high, you know, class freaking Manhattan or a Cosmopolitan and a freaking martini glass lit on fire and shit. And I'll replace their shitty drink with a good drink, you know, and and it's the little things that gets their attention that allows them to to come back and say hello and, you know, uh, or other stupid things. Look for a moment of time. Like they're getting hit on by somebody that they're obviously, you know, insecure about. I have walked up to complete random women and said, honey, you doing okay? You need another drink? You know, and they've put their arms around me. I don't even know this broad from anybody, but because you're coming to play hero. It's I've the done same that. thing. I, it's, that, yeah. was a, that was a college move because in college yeah. bars, it's, you're, the girls are always getting hit on uncomfortably by people. Yep. You know, and, and, and it's the same thing in business where you're walking up to people um, in that first engagement, first move. So if you're at an after hours, you can do the same thing. And if you're uncomfortable saying hi, you can walk up and go, hey, what are you drinking? Do you need another? Right. And so it's a move just to get the conversation going. Um, I, I th- go ahead. Your the the example you gave of dr- bringing the drinks over, or replacing the drink. It's not so much about getting the conversation going. I, I that is much more the just getting visible and making sure that they yeah, know you're that. there. And that the same is true for sales. You have to have that. A lot of times, that's the first move. And, you know, that's the first move for your prospecting is letting them know that your company and you are even out there. Especially if you're doing. I it just on had a horrible media. thought. Oh, I just had a oh, really horrible oh, thought pop oh, in my head. Oh, God. You know, sometimes in sales, <laughs> you got to go after the married chick, right? Um, because, you know, <laughs> I said this is going to be horrible, right? Because, she, you know, you need the client and they're already engaged with another company doing business. It's like trying to pick up a married chick, which you really shouldn't do. But fuck, we live in a crazy world, right? <laughs> um Right. I, I totally love my wife and I've never cheated on her, nor will I ever do it. Right. But but if I you know looked at it like picking up a married chick, now it's sometimes about sticking around until her husband fucks up so bad that she leaves him and you're there to pick up the fucking pieces. You know, so so <laughs> we can go on and on about these crazy <laughs> comparisons. Right. Please don't cheat on your freaking significant others. You got into a relationship for a fucking reason. But. Um, I'm going to get fucking emails in. Donnie said it'll just be fucking cheat yep. on my wife. And oh, Jesus. But, but you know, I love the idea of getting visible. Um, that's a great way to put it is oftentimes I just got to know you're there. You know, um, and I think, you know, as, as even with our businesses, as they continue to grow, the more and more people that knows that success champions networking, you know, exists, champions tables exist, the badass business summit exists. The more and more that we can let the world know that we're here, the more people raise their hand because now we're getting noticed. And that getting noticed is the icebreaker to be able to come in and start some really, really cool conversations. So every um, week, but do, oh, go ahead, finish your. Hold thought. on, hold on, do, but but don't don't do the get noticed thing like too extravagant. Like don't paint her name in John Deere green on a fucking water tower type shit. Right? <laughs> There's a country song for you. <laughs> that is funny. All right. So every week, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that we take a question from one of our members uh, about the topic that we're going to be talking about today. And uh, that's usually where we get our topics because we get really cool questions. But we went out because we came up with this idea. We went out, asked for questions. And this week we got one from Lori Seitz, owner of Zen Rabbit. She's also the host of the podcast. Fine is a four letter word and member of the Bethesda Badasses chapter. Uh, she asks, why is one so much easier than the other? Lori, which one is the easier one? I'm easier really <laughs> kind of curious in your answer for this. Uh, I, I think it has to, you have to put it in perspective. It is always easier for a woman to get laid than a dude to get laid. Always. Um, if you don't believe me, women, 
go sit at any bar in the world by yourself, right? And somebody's going to be hitting on you quicker than shit. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did the bar thing in college, uh, bounced and, and bartended, and it was. You didn't see the girls hitting on the guys. That's not. Yeah, it happens. Yes, I get it, but it does not happen at the same rate that guys hit on girls. So, right. uh, it but is definitely a perspective I think Lori, thing. Lori, yeah, I, I definitely think Lori is saying that you know trying to get laid is easier than trying to sell, and it's. Oftentimes, the emotional attachment to the outcome. You know, when you look at trying to get laid versus trying to sell something, um, perspective of trying to get laid is most people, if they're at a bar, if they're out amongst the type of people they want to engage with, both parties are looking for the same fucking thing. Both parties are looking for an end result. In business, people aren't always looking for the end result. A lot of times, they don't even know they need what you're selling. So not only do you have to get their attention, get a conversation going, you then have to get them to start selling you on why your product or service will fit into their world. And then you got to court them somehow to get them in an engaged, ongoing process. There's a lot more chances to emotionally fuck up that, that dialogue and that conversation because there's more maneuvers that have to happen to where in the bar scenes and all that, both parties are out there for a specific reason. And ladies, you know you're as nasty as this guys. I hear you guys talk, so don't even try and play us off. I'm not going to a bar to get laid. Fuck you. You are too, right? Um, so, so it's it's that same same thought process of when when two people are already looking for a thing, the chances of it happening are a lot easier. It's when in business, two parties aren't often looking for the same thing. Another big part of it is the emotional investment. When you are at the bar and you yep, I completely agree. <laughs> you have liquid courage. You have liquid courage, but you're you're not emotionally <laughs> invested. If you hit on a girl at a bar or if you're a girl, you you're hit never on a gonna boy, see her again. Yeah. And and they say, No, you're not you're not hurt. It doesn't you don't have that emotional letdown. You don't have that same fear of rejection that people do in sales. When you spent time working with a client, trying to get them to to uh, say yes, and you've gone through the whole process, and then they finally, at the end, you're you're all excited, and they say no, there's this big emotional letdown that happens, and it is much harder. And we see this with with a lot of the people we work with that the rejection piece for sales is a much harder rejection to take for some reason. For some reason, they take it more personal. Then when you get when you hit on someone at the bar and they're like, no, and you're like, yeah, whatever. You don't know what you're missing out on. And you move on to the next one. Well, yeah, and I think you're right because there's livelihood involved, right? If, if, if this person tells me no, fuck, I'll never see him again. No big deal. But in business, if this person tells me no, then it's affecting the livelihood, affecting the ability to pay the bills, those type of things. So there is emotional consequences greater in business. And there shouldn't be. You should have that same mentality of, fuck it, she's never going to see me again or he's never going to see me again. Yeah, let's go to the next one. And if you can get to that place, life life is a really good good place. So what's so, our action item this week, Donnie? Yep. So action item is get to the point where yes or no doesn't fucking matter. You know, you've got to understand that sales is a conversation with an outcome. You get a yes, you get a no, you get a significant next step. And all of those outcomes are the right outcome. Don't try and push for the sale. Don't try and walk up and say, hey, let's fuck, right? Give it time and nurture it. Take it through the stages of a process and, you know, be detached from what happens and, you know, have some real authentic adult conversations and watch how much more success you get. So as always, guys, if you got any tips, tricks, any value out of this episode, 
Please do us a favor. Make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Ring the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. If you're listening in podcast land, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, please make sure you subscribe there and tell one person about the show. Um, we would love to have more and more people hear these type of messages and stories. Love you, mean it. See you, bye. Thank you.